So, the raggedy old fart finally snuffed it. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly, so if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now unfortunately it's not a very happy update video ladies and gentlemen. One of our mighty animals of the realm has sadly passed away. One that I knew was coming, but I didn't know when. Now if you've been following me for a very long time, you may already be able to figure out who it is that has passed away. But for those that haven't, it is of course the one that lived in here, our mature male Nandu Chromatus who was in fact the first mature male tarantula we ever had here in the realm. So my Pseudoclomorus gigas, the orange tree spider, was the first sling I raised to mature male. But this Nandu Chromatus, he was the first to ever mature here. Let's take a look at him before I explain any more. So here he is, ladies and gentlemen, the mature male Nandu Chromatus sitting on the lid to one of my roach bins. Ah, poor old man. So, I actually picked this old guy up at my very first BTS show. When I purchased him, he was already an old man. Not quite mature, but I can't remember now. It was either sub-adult or perhaps pre-sub-adult stages. And he's been matured with me for a few years now. So by popping my finger behind, you can make out the tibial hooks there. And if I were to spin him around, if you look at the pedipalps, they have that sort of boxing glove look to them. All indications of a mature male. Now I knew this was coming, guys, and not just because he was mature and old, but he wasn't feeding anymore. He would take the odd bite of a prey, suck out a little bit of juices for a few seconds and leave it be. He was also huddled in in the legs. Not in a death curl, so his legs weren't curled right under, but they were kind of in like this a bit more. The bottom of the legs still stuck out like that, but a lot of his legs were in like this. And he wasn't able to walk very good. And he'd stopped doing his cycling around the enclosure a long time ago. So if you're unaware, mature males will kind of march around the enclosure looking for a female. And he'd stopped that and slowed down months before he died. So this is a freshly dead male. He died last night at all early hours of this morning. And you can see how small his abdomen is there. Ah, poor guy. He's so soft. So soft and was so loved. And I'm not actually going to send him off to dead set or anything, guys, because although you can't see it properly here, most of his abdomen is bald by now. And when they kind of patch him up, he'll still have that bald bum. And that's not how I want to remember him. I want to remember him for the amazing eater he once was. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to place a little tribute to our mature male Nandu Chromatus from when I got him housed him and fed him a few times on camera. One of the best eaters in the whole realm before he matured. Thank you. 
hope you guys enjoyed that little tribute. I'm sorry there wasn't much more footage to show you. But yes, he has gone. And I've lit a candle in his name. So, if I'm not going to preserve his body, what am I going to do? Well, we're going to stick him in a pot of mud. <laughs> Honestly, guys, that's what I'm going to do. We're going to place him inside a tub with substrate in there. I'm going to cover him over, give him a mini funeral. Why a tub? Well, I have promised my patrons that sometime soon I'm going to get new species of isopod. So he will start to decay within the substrate. And when I eventually get the new isopods, I will place them in that home. And they can then feast on the body of our chromatus. For those of you that think that's cruel, it's not. We don't waste anything here in the realm, and I'd like to continue the cycle of life. Isopods, over time, will be able to consume this tarantula and get whatever goodness is left out of it to thrive themselves. Just how it would be in nature. So let's set up our little pot and say our goodbyes to the Nandu Chromatis. So in this pot here is a bunch of substrate and some leaf litter. It's not fully set up for the isopods. I do need to get some more rotten white wood and it's hard to pick up on the camera but there is quite a ditch in the middle here. And that's where we will bury the Chromatis. First time I would have ever held him. There he is. You can see the balding parts of the abdomen there. Doesn't look like a lot of balding, but I assure you, it really is when it's plumped up. They're so soft. He was so beautiful. Let's place him in. Ah. Oh. Don't you just look a mess in there now? It's such a shame. So let's bury him over. So any of you invert keepers out there, if you have anything that does die that you don't plan on preserving, why not give back to the rest of your collection? Or perhaps you don't have anything you can think of that would eat a dead specimen. You could even bury it in your garden. All nutrients will go back into the ground and be the natural cycle of life. Something that I really strongly agree with. Just putting it in a bin just doesn't cut it for me. He was worth more than that. So there we have it guys. With a bit more leaf litter. A bit more rotten white wood. We'll set this up for isopods. Comment me below if you're looking forward to seeing new isopods here in the realm. Because we have literally thousands of dairy cows now. So I feel that I might have a little bit of a knack for isopods. We'll soon find out, of course. Now, you may remember up here, guys, I did house two species of other isopod, the orange ones and the grey ones. Grey ones are doing absolutely fine. Orange ones I've actually given away to Kelly because they thrived. I mean, completely and utterly thrived. And I only got them as experiments to see if I was gonna be good enough to take on more complicated species. Now that I'm confident that my keeping and care of isopods has done well, I will do more videos featuring them, showing you setups, showing you what I have done to have such a swarm. Just for the purpose of this video, I've lit the candle one last time to say goodbye to the Nandu Chromatis. Don't ever light candles next to dry leaves, guys. Do not copy me here. I will be blowing this out straight afterwards. But I have one last thing to say before you guys get to see my brand new outro. And that is, who is now going to have this 30 centimeter cubed Nandu Chromatis enclosure? Stay tuned to find out. Thanks for watching guys. Take care, bye bye. Do you guys want to see what else dwells in the realm? If so, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. My usual upload days are Wednesdays and Sundays, so I'll see you guys there. Oh, and one more thing, 
If you want to become a disciple of the realm and have your name shown on the screen like these lovely people, you can do so in one of two ways. You can scroll down the screen now and hit that join button next to the subscribe to be a channel member. Or alternatively, you can follow my link in the description below to my Patreon page. Both methods grant you access to my private Facebook page, where we like to discuss even more things creepy crawly. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye bye.